I used the GI Bill to finance 100% of my master's of science in human resources. And I used the remainder to finish my PhD in business. All right, everybody, welcome to YBI, where we discuss financial ways to better yourself and your financial worth and self. We have myself, Roman, and Zion here. We have a special guest today that Zion is going to introduce for you all. Yes, today, as you guys know, we are continuing with the financial and the uh, and how that goes with education. And today we had to bring on one of the most dynamic people that I know, one of the, the greatest people that I've had in my life for the last several years. I've known him since I was a wee tot. Um, we have Dr. Jesse Madgett on with us today. How are you doing? How are you doing, sir? Hello, Zion. Hello, Roman. Pleased to meet you all today. Um, this is fantastic. Uh, podcast that you have here. So I'm definitely honored to be here uh, this evening and uh, to really share some, you know, some of my experiences and perspective. And so I, I, um, I yield the floor to your questions. Man. Excellent. Excellent. Because we have plenty of them for you. We're going to pick your brain today. So uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Okay. Well, a little bit about me. I'm a, I'm from Chicago, born and raised. Uh, after high school graduation from uh, Proviso West and, uh, in, Il- in Hillside, Illinois, I joined the Armed Forces. I started out in the Navy first, uh, and where I specialized in, uh, in, in emergency medical care. And uh, I had that career for about uh, seven and a half years. While I was doing that, I went to college at night, uh, primarily uh, in community colleges first. And then I transferred over to a HBCU known as Norfolk State the only real HBCU in the whole country. So go Spartans. Uh, and, right. that's, and so that's where I graduated from Norfolk State. And upon graduation from, uh, from Norfolk State, I earned, my, uh, I earned my commission in the United States Navy as a Navy officer. Uh, we, call the, we call those officers ensigns when you first, when you first graduate. And so as a military officer, uh, I've been bas- basically both enlisted and as an officer, I have traveled around the world around the world. Uh, I have seen my, my share of, um, you know, global conflicts. So I have deployed to Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Operation Enduring Freedom, uh, Provide Comfort, uh, and the War on Terrorism as we know it today. And so my military career spanned approximately 21 years. During that time, I worked on my master's degree in human resource management. I also raised a family. And so uh, while raising my family, uh, my wife and I, Natalie, we made sure that our children uh, clearly understood our core values, uh, emphasis on education, and and definitely saving for their potential future. Um, After my military career, I started out in the civilian sector in manufacturing. Uh, One of the first companies I worked for was uh, Kraft Foods. And uh, I started out as what we call a Six Sigma Black Belt. These are problem-solving professionals. No matter what industry you place us in, our job is to help organizations operationally improve, save money, um, cascade your product, build quality, and ensure uh, ensure compliance and minimize risk. So these these this is what Six Sigma Black Belts do. And so after about a oh about a nine to ten year career as a Six Six Sigma Black Belt, I returned to the United States government. Uh, where I provide operations uh, strategy to the Department of Defense. I've been part of the, uh, I've been back in the administration uh, next month, excuse me, uh, January will make four years. And uh, it has been a pleasure to, to be back in government, serving the needs of our, uh, not only our troops, but citizens every day, just like you. Excellent, excellent. So uh, what are some of the major misconceptions that are around uh, the joining the armed forces, especially for young people? Uh, basically that uh, you're going to be hollered at all day. You're not going to have a life. Um, You cannot make decisions. Um, There is no future for you after you get out of the armed forces. Uh, Those are common misperceptions. Uh, uh, And the most common misperception is that all you do is fight wars and shoot guns 24-7 every single day. That's not how the military works, no. So shed, shed some light on, on, on the things that actually happen uh, when you're going and joining the armed forces. Like what, with those misconceptions in mind, what actually does happen? So I'll lead you through a, you know, I've been, I've been 
although I've been out of military uniform for some time, and I am now a Department of Defense civilian employee, but I'll focus mostly on the, uh, on the military, the uniform, uh, being a uniform. So basically, imagine yourself, um, so first of all, you have, to, you have to go through basic training. Basic training is anywhere from eight to, to 11 weeks, and depending on the armed forces, armed service that you join. And uh, in that, you're going to learn how to live amongst other people in a very con confined space. Consider that confined space a college dorm room, a college dorm-like facility. However, you're going to, you're going to be operating in a, in a very controlled environment. And what does that mean? That means you'll have to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. You have to make sure that your your health and hygiene is main, is is uh, sufficient so that you do do not cross contaminate or cause an environment of infection or disease because you're going to be associated with anywhere from eighty to nearly three hundred people at a time, okay, all going through the same introduction into the armed forces, all right, and so you're going to be in close quarters with folks. People are coming from all over the world. Excuse me, uh, all over the country. And maybe perhaps the world because uh, you know civilian you know Americans live overseas as well and they come home to the United States to actually join the armed forces and so for those several weeks that you're going through basic training you're learning you're learning about each other you're learning about the military structure you're learning about the day-to-day -day, meaning you get up at six health and hygiene you eat together you learn about you you receive military education uh, and that education includes uh, one, who are your leaders? Two, uh, what are my particular duties, my, what are my particular basic duties and responsibilities? Uh, so think of it as introduction to your first job. You're in, a, you're in a new organization, you don't know what you're doing, so you're going to have a lot of people teach, coach, and mentor you on what you're supposed to do and when. Because when you do not do something on time, it affects the mission or the or the product and service that you ex, you, you intend to provide that the organization has uh, dedicated itself to provide to America and around the world every single day. So just one person not doing what they're supposed to do can have a cascade effect down the line in terms of how the, the organization operates. <laughs> I can go further. Roman. Roman. <laughs> Roman. Because, okay, okay. That's a little bit of a tangent off of what our questions kind of were, what we kind of had set. But on that, so would you say from that training, from, from that experience, would have set you up kind of in a different path? Or what, how do you feel like that differentiates from what you see other students from a young age going to be like, okay, I'm going to go to directly to a college, whether as going through like the military, going through the training that you went through, or mm -hmm. seeing how an organization can actually run down how one missing piece can crumble an entire industry or business in a sense, how you feel like that mm -hmm. would shape your career or your professional self? I think I, think I can say that it, it has, looking back, I know that it has a, it, you know, having that structure had a profound effect on who I am today. Why? Because as a young man, as a, or a young adult, a teenager, we often, See, we are, we're, we're, we are bombarded today by a lot of information. Go left, no, go right, go straight ahead, no, go backwards. And so I decided at a young age that I needed to follow a simple path, a, a path that is trusted, and, 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 only thing, and the only thing that was required of me was to commit, to complete it. Once I decided to make that commitment to complete something, all it's everything else became open to me and so one of the one of my coaches used to say to me they'll say they said scholar magic opportunities happen to the prepared mind so what does that mean you have to take a a focus you have to agree to 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 be focused and train your mind to be prepared for opportunities that you probably did not expect so opportunities happen to the prepared mind. And so if I'm focused, not, not allowing outside distractions, whether it be parties, whether it be doing something in the hood that I have no business doing it and just following along because I don't want to appear not cool to, my, to the rest of my, my friends and maybe even family, all right? 
uh, those distractions can have a profound effect, effect on your focus and what you should do for the foreseeable future. And so I was, I was introduced to that concept at a very young age. And, and as a result, it has helped me personally and professionally. Excellent. So what would you say are some of the, the sacrifices that you had to make um, either educationally or financially because of the armed forces? Uh, sometimes things don't go according to plan. So for instance, I wanted to be in college full time. But because I was on active duty, um, I had to deploy to uh, potentially the Panama invasion or Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, or, you know, hey, my firstborn kid is being born now. And, that, and, and having, a young fa having a family at a young age, those things take priority. But that's no different from life in general. So whereas really the sacrifice uh, to me was, was essential. Uh, in terms of where my focus was going to be. If my, you know, in terms of education, all right, I have a job to do and I have a family to do. So I'll slow the pace on what I want to do in college for now. But, I'll, but I still have a commitment. I still made a commitment to finish my education. So for instance, while I raised a family, it still took me. Now, folks would say, well, you're supposed to go to college for four years and graduate. Okay. Under traditional mindset, sure, you can go to college for four years. It took me five and a half to finish college, all while deploying, being on active duty, seeing several wars, and raising a family. Focus. But you got to commit. Life is still going to move on regardless of what happens to you. So you make sacrifices along the way. Don't expect to not make some sacrifices. I think that's an excellent point, just saying that it's not, you don't necessarily have to take just a two or four year normal plan. You, mm -hmm. you need to take a gap year or whatever else is going on in your life. It could take you longer. Um, sure. No matter how long you're going to be in school to get that done. Like that's perfect, especially for the people that maybe, especially people for the, for the series that we're doing right now, maybe thinking about going into their educational path to their entryway into their careers or education. That's a major point to hit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, so let's look at the flip side. Yeah. Yep. Successes. And then also, can you also maybe bring in that part of like uh, the VA bill, maybe how that kind of helped you as far as just if you uh, that got portion of the VA bill to help pay for any of your schooling or how that may have affected you? Yes. Uh, let me. Let me so, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening, the armed forces has what we call the GI bill. The moment that you raise your hand to I do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. All right, you are making a commitment to serving in the United States government, particularly armed forces. And from that uh, moment on, you are going to earn GI Bill benefits to be used towards purchasing your home, your first home, towards uh, financing your education. Those benefits are available to you the moment you graduate from basic training. Okay, so um, it's an investment that the United States government is making in you to make, to do what? Not only to, not just better yourself, but to better the military and overall the country. So we need you to make that commitment to, uh, to you know, for your own self-betterment, but also eventually for the United States government as well. We need you uh, because transition does happen in our armed forces. People join, get out, uh, as well as government. And so we would like to look back and see what other talent is available and recruit from, from the folks that we've helped, uh, society has helped uh, elevate by using those you know, veterans benefits. So have you, would you say that uh, those are some of the, the things that you have, were you able to pull from those benefits in order to finance your education? Um, absolutely. Okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. I did, I, I used the, uh, the VA, excuse me, the, uh, the GI Bill at a very young age. I used the GI Bill to earn my bachelor's of science degree. I used the GI Bill to finance 100% of my master's of science and human resources. And I used the remainder of my, uh, my GI Bill to finish my PhD in business, business administration. Okay. So if you make a commitment, the benefits will be there. 
So, so that's if you guys I, are numbers people, that was probably like a hundred, a couple hundred <laughs> thousand dollars um, that we're talking about in terms of how much school costs. I mean, my school is costing me $50,000 a year. My undergrad cost me $50,000 a year. Yeah. My doctorate that I eventually want to get is going to cost me another $50,000 a year. Um, yeah. So we're going to have the same degrees, but he's not going to have debt. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, you can say, hey, you know, let's just say you went to, you know, I think you, you went to North Central, right? Yes, sir. All right. So let's just say North Central costs 50K a year. So that's 200, what? $200,000. I can't count anymore. But yeah, $200,000. $200, so $200,000 for a four year, four year, four year degree. That mm-hmm. is not unusual going across the country. And then let's say you went to law school. The average law school is somewhere between 75 and uh, including, you know, room and board between 75000 and $95,000 on average. Okay. So that's another six-figure debt when you're coming out okay and so that's three years of study is three years of study so when you add that all up that's almost close to half a million so imagine especially for young african-american men and women young adults who 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 struggle through financial aid and having that long-term debt when you have an additional avenue to take by simply serving the country Okay, serving in the armed forces, and those benefits are available to you to minimize the cost of education. All right, because the federal government is already saying the American people are already saying we we are willing to make an an investment in you. So why not take them up on their offer? Again, opportunities happen to the prepared mind. A prepared mind means a commitment to focus. Yeah, and I feel like that's. That- Please, person, especially coming from a, a young person myself, just being like not having that trust in the government to say to be like, okay, I'm really putting my life or I'm putting my faith in the government to be like, okay, you're going to take care of me after I give you this commitment. Um, mm-hmm. I'm like, that's a very hard thing, especially in our community, about actually trusting the government to do do that. To be like, okay, yes. how can I trust a system and a government that's been so far historically, you know, put up against me? To then trust them and be like, okay, you're going to help me out and benefit me in the future, which I think you mm-hmm. brought up the point already earlier that uh, administrations change, governments change, whoever's in power has changed, and like those things are really what you go for for that service. Sure. Like, I have a cousin and a friend who just enlisted this year, and I was mm-hmm. very much like, what made y'all do that? Like, what, what, yes. what, what was going on? And they, talking to him maybe got my in a whole different light about it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it takes going and see. And also hearing the stories of others, not just me, but also people who are who are closer to you and hearing their stories. There, there's going to be a lot of variance in, in, in terms of how people uh, chose to to take this path, take the military path. Um, and yes, um, America can American government can do a better job in its trust relations building. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to return to government, because I wanted to, to help be the face of change, to help um, bring uh, trust and, rely, and reliability. So one of the things that I use uh, that I, I always say, uh, when I, whenever I have a customer or, or people I'm dealing with in general, I always want to make a point of being what, we, what I call QCR, qualified, credible, and reliable. Those three things, those characteristics are important for trust building. And so if I, if for whatever reason, you don't see me as qualified, credible, and reliable, it is my responsibility to show you how you can. So for right now, uh, I, let's just say one day when we control COVID-19 here in the country, one day I would love to invite you to the Pentagon and I will show you how your armed forces work and how the Department of Defense work. Sometimes you just need to see it for yourself. Gotcha. So it sounds like there is a a wide array of things that you can do. So it's not just, yeah, you're going to be a foot soldier or you're just going to be this, you're exactly. just going to be that. There's always something. So especially for the the listeners that are younger, that are that are thinking about, hey, do I need to, do I want to join? I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. There are still other things that you can do 
um, to serve the country and to actually in, in turn serve yourself. Um, obviously, this is about education. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. major that the GI Bill um, will give you the opportunity to go to school and be pretty much debt free coming out. Um, so that is a major, major point that we are going to have to uh, that you're going to have to to highlight when you're looking at weighing the options between a four year university, um, an apprenticeship, um, and all the other things that we're going to be hitting during this series. Now, um, now, now, real quick, now an important, you know, funny. I'm glad you said that. One more point to make is you don't have to go on active duty uh, to join the military. You can also join uh, at a community college and college an ROTC program. It's free. You don't have to sign up for the military by taking and taking an ROTC course. We want you to show up. We want to show you what how the uh, military military science courses work. It is they are electives. You don't have to pay for it, okay? But if you like them, you can take more. And if you complete the the curriculum, the ROTC or military science curriculum at any community college or college we will immediately offer you a immediate commission in the United States Armed Forces. So you, so what does that mean? You don't have to go looking for a job immediately and, and, and start putting your resume on resume builder and, and indeed.com, hoping somebody will give you a shot. Just complete the ROTC program and you have a job. Y'all heard the man. I mean, it's, there's, there's opportunities, you know, at the end of the day, you want to open yourself to as many opportunities as you possibly can. And sure. um, we invited Dr. Magid on to just open that door, open you guys' eyes to those different things. Because I mean, myself, I'm learning things with you guys about, um, you know, the ROTC programs and, you know, I knew about the GI Bill, but there's so much, there's so many other opportunities that we are unaware of. It's not just being on the ground, holding a gun, going overseas, doing all these different things. Yes, there are sacrifices. Yes, you're going to have to do things um, for the military, but at the same time, there are there are other branches, there are other things, and there's a ton of opportunity. The the keys to success, regardless of your profession, regardless of what branch of the military, is that you have to have fundamentals. You have to have yes. a solid foundation in saving and in the other things that we've talked about and discussed on this channel. So, you know, going through all of those things is so important. I mean, we spent weeks and weeks discussing different things, different accounts that you can use. All those things are not going to, they, those are the things that are going to make a difference, um, especially when you, and if you choose to do something um, educationally, you're going to have a bunch of money, but no fundamentals. So, right. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's key. That's key in this. Um, I know that we're, we're getting close to time here. So let's talk about um, books, podcasts, YouTube channels, et cetera. What do you use to one, stay focused, um, but what also do you recommend for younger people um, in education and financially? Okay, well, first focus on social media. Um, I have to be honest with you. I do not, I do see Twitter accounts. I do see uh, Facebook posts, but I understand with the line of work that I'm in, I have to be very careful with how the information is provided to me on those social networks. So this is what I do. I stay closely tied to the information coming from my local leaders in government, meaning my state representative, my state delegate. Uh, I go to town hall. I physically go to town hall meetings. I know it may seem crazy to you because that some folks will say, well, that's for older people. No, the folks, I have to disagree. The folks that I'm meeting today are in your age group. They're, you know, so we are using social media uh, tools such as Microsoft Teams, Zoom, uh, all these live channels to communicate what is happening in our communities today. So the first level of of information I receive is from sources just like this right now. The second source is that I use, you know, television channels like PBS, Public Broadcasting System. Why? Because usually those conversations are coming coming right from the from the floor of Congress or right from the agency where the camera is focused on the, the director, him, him or herself. And, and it's not filter, filtered through a news agency like uh, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, ABC. It's not filtered into a, a different language so-called to, to fit the needs of, uh, to, you know, to be placed in layman's terms. I watch it coming from the source. And that's how I, you know, I, I receive my information. Now in terms of financial, information 
I use, I still watch, you know, um, like Bloomsburg or whatever comes out on MSNBC. And I watch the ticker. Uh, I use those sources to stay up to beat, stay up to uh, speed. I'm a former vice president of an international bank uh, that I worked for prior to coming back into government. So I understand the ticker tape. You can also understand the ticker tape too by simply taking Economics 101. It's not science, not a math science there. You can take Economics 101 and understand yields and dividends all day. And then you can keep pace with what's happening in America and around the globe. Sure. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess a little lasting question to wrap this up. So anyone else is deciding between what paths to take for their educational path, whether it's the military, whether it's a traditional two-year, four-year university, community, or apprenticeship and vocational, what's, I guess, your roundabout advice you could give them when they try to decide what path they want to go down? First and foremost, um, you're, if you, so the, the path, this is the path that I recommend is this. If it feels too comfortable, if the path you're about to take feels comfortable, challenge yourself. Because if you start out comfortable, you'll never know how or what challenges that you are, um, that you might, you, know, you never know how you're going to respond to a real challenge once you face it. So try not to be too comfortable. Good trouble, as somebody once said. Get into some good trouble. Challenge yourself. I, I know, I, I know you got, I know folks are, they like to hear about, well, I'm going to take the path of least resistance. Okay, that's your choice. But when the challenge comes, how do you respond? Well, I'm not going to go that route. And that leads to complacency. Success is not easy. You got to struggle. And plus to grow, you have to be in an uncomfortable situation. And can be <laughs> Absolutely. Saved in any other better way. Um, yes. <laughs> if you're going to do better, you got to grow some type of way. And you can't grow yes. sitting at home not doing nothing. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And, 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 and don't just take my word for it. Try a comfortable, comfortable path if you want to. Um, and then give me a call when you face a challenge. And we'll have a different discussion. Because my job is to get people not just up the hill. My job is to get you over the hill. And that's a different set of minds. That's a different mindset that you're going to have to have. Absolutely. I think that that is a excellent place for us to to wrap this up um dr magic thank you so much for for You're coming and sharing so so much um for all of our our listeners and our viewers we appreciate it um i personally appreciate you you know as You're as a welcome. sidebar um <laughs> roman any uh any other final thoughts no i think that was that, that wrapped up everything we can do sterling statements in a little bit but i think that was good all right well all right. um well, I'll see you guys at the next marathon and uh, with full gear, 200 pounds, and uh, we'll take that heel together. Y'all hear him, not Let's me, but y'all. Um, <laughs> all right, you guys know what it is. We may be young <laughs> and we may even be broke, but we are always investing. Remember that. Until next time, we will see you guys. Peace. Peace. Hey everybody, thank you for listening to Young Broken Investing. We just want to let you know that these are the opinions of the hosts. They're not meant to be the basis of any security purchases or investments. We're trying to give a little information out there for everybody and uh, have fun and be safe.